Narcissism. Is it a personality disorder or is it a personality choice? I'm curious to know your thoughts. Write them down in the comment section down below. Typically, when people ask me this during one-on-one coaching calls, I usually ask a question back. And my question is, what does it matter if you're in a relationship with family members or a spouse or friendships where you're being demeaned, devalued, bullied, yelled at, raged at, neglected, threatened? What does it matter what label you give them? What does it matter if you call them narcissist, psychopath, demon, jerk, whatever? My number one goal is to just get you out and get you away from that toxicity. That's all I'm concerned with. However, I think that it's important that we have this conversation on whether or not we need to continue to look at narcissism as a disorder or a disability, some kind of a mental thing, or if it is a personality choice. Let's get into this. My name is Kevin, and this is The Royal We. And now, before I do continue, I want to let you know that I'm here to support you. Down in the description box below this video, you'll find access for one-on-one appointments with me. I do take telephone calls as well as video calls through Zoom, FaceTime, and WhatsApp. So if you are looking for one-on-one support, perhaps you're dealing with toxic, narcissistic family members, and you're tired of wondering whether or not they have a disorder or a disability or what hit them in the head years ago or whatever, you just want to get out of the situation. Head on down there, schedule some time with me. I'll work with you to get you into a better place and to get you out of the toxicity. In addition to that, I do have a coaching program. My coaching program is live and in person. Now, the Royal We is a community. We work out of a diary and a journal. We're mapping out our 2024. In addition to that, I do have a beautiful, custom, handmade, I'm going to show this to you because it's pretty cool, home phone screen that I designed, my own finger painting. If you join the Roby Coaching Program right now, I'm going to give you this to put on your phone because it's an excellent way for you to be reminded each and every day that you are the royal we and you bear the scars to show what you've been through. Now, let's talk about this. Narcissism, It is. is it a disorder, a disability? Is it a choice? Now, I think it's important that we address this. A lot of people want it to be a disorder. Hmm. Many of you hope it's a disorder. You hope it's a disability. Let's talk about the reasons why. Number one, if it's a disability, if it's some kind of a disorder, well, there's a hope that you can read up on it and learn how to better deal with it so you can still fit into that toxic family dynamic or you can make that toxic marriage work. Even though you've been suffering for the past 10, 15, 20 years, some of you all of your life. So with disorder, with disability, comes the mindset that you can learn about it and try to understand it. But there's another reason. There's another reason why a lot of you, myself included, would like to look at it as a disorder, as a disability. And that reason is, is because it's more justifiable. It's easier to comprehend being attacked, being bullied, being criticized being raged at, being threatened, being neglected. It's easier to justify. It's easier to talk about these things in the sense of it being some kind of a disorder. You can write it off. Hmm. They got hit in the head when they were younger, and now half their brain is dumb. That's why they act like that. They did drugs and smoked too much marijuana when they were kiddos. So there you go. That's the reason. Oh, they were... Deprived of oxygen when they choked on a meatball at some point in time. That's why they're mean. Because facing the reality that somebody is just cruel and mean and chose to treat you that way is more difficult to accept. Because what does that say about the world? What does that say about people? Wow. Well, now you have to readjust your whole thinking. Because it's not a disorder. It's not a disability. They didn't fall off their skateboard and hit their head and it made them mean. There is no past to give them. You have to see them differently. This is why it's hard. A lot of you still want to write it off. A lot of you still want to give your parents a pass. Oh, it's the drugs they did. A lot of you still want to give your spouse a pass. Oh, it was her, it was the upbringing. 
It was her upbringing. It was his upbringing. It's what's happened to them. No, no, no. Some people wouldn't choose to be evil. Some people aren't evil. It's, it's a disorder. It's a disability that was caused by some form of thing. And watch this. Let's go back throughout history. Now that we understand the two reasons why most people want it to be a disorder and want it to be a disability. Let's go back throughout ancient history now. And let's just look at the reality of the world we live in. I'm going to throw out some names, some stories. And you tell me, disorder, disability, or choice? In the ancient literature of the Bible, Cain kills his brother Abel. Disorder, disability, or choice? Further along in the Bible, ancient literature... Whether or not you believe in God or Jesus, I don't care. That's irrelevant to me. I'm just talking about the ancient literature of the Bible now. Joseph's brothers try to kill Joseph and throw him in a pit, leave him to die, sell him to slavery. Disability, disorder, or choice? Hmm? Adolf Hitler has a mindset, take over the world, beginning with killing all the Jews. Disorder, disability, or choice? Look, this, the ancient story of all time, the devil and his hatred of God. Disorder, disability, or choice? I'm not saying that it's easy to accept this because many of you who are watching this video right now, I would say are light. Meaning your choice is aligned with that of something that is in light. Now watch this. The light, how many of you have heard this? According to ancient scripture, the darkness cannot comprehend the light. How many of you have heard that? How many of you know it works the opposite way as well? The light cannot comprehend the darkness. See, you, myself, anybody who's been attacked bullied, raged at for no reason. And that's not the type of person that you are. You comprehend it not. You don't understand it. And you never will. Nor will I. Because it's not who you are. And this is all that matters. This goes back to what I was saying at the opening of this video. It matters not what their disability is. It matters not what their disorder is. All that matters is that it is shaking your light. It's rattling your spirit because it does not resonate. It's breaking you down. That's all you have to pay attention to. You cannot comprehend the darkness of what you are up against because the light cannot comprehend the darkness, nor can the darkness comprehend the light. At some point in our existence here on this planet, Within modern Western world society and all over the world, light and darkness have tried to come together and, and mesh, have families and have kids, and we are the fallout of all of that. And we are just now back in this place of realizing, whoa, what am I up against? What am I sleeping with? What is my family? What are these people? And by the way, it absolutely can be biological families. When we get into the territory of darkness and light and good and evil and choice, it doesn't mean that these differences cannot exist within a family that shares blood. Again, we were given this example in the beginning of the ancient literature of the Bible. Cain killed his own brother Abel. They shared blood. They shared parents. They shared a childhood together. Yet Cain still killed his brother Abel. So it doesn't matter if it's your family. The point is, is that no matter how close you are or you think you are with people, if there is darkness that does not resonate with your light, then you will comprehend it not. And as a result, the easiest thing to do is to try to figure out what disability it is. What's the diagnosis then? 
because then I can understand it. Then I can wrap my mind around it, even though we really can't. Think about it. You can call them a narcissist, psychopath, sociopath. Can you still wrap your mind around it? No. Nobody can. Mm -mm. No psychologist, no counselor, no doctor, nobody can wrap their mind around it. They've been trying. This is why a lot of people are here watching coaches talk. Without studying psychology, without having a counseling whatever. Because if psychologists and counselors had the answers as to why, as to whether or not it's choice or disability, then we'd all be satisfied. And there would be no place for us to talk because there wouldn't be any need to. But psychologists, counselors, people have been at it for years, decades, centuries. Ever since Cain killed his brother Abel, people have wanted to know. Choice, disability, disorder. What is it? When the harsher truth is, whoa. I have to accept responsibility for who I am in this life. You have to accept responsibility for who you are in this life. You and I have to become better judges. With each and every person you allow into your life, you have to judge through watching them, observing, and you have to determine how close in proximity you can get. There is no label, personality disorder, disability. There's no label that will protect you. So when it comes to the question of narcissism, is it a disability, is it a disorder, or is it a choice? Here's what I say. I'll say it's not for us to know. If it helps you to call it a disorder and a disability, so be it. So long as you stay out. If it helps you to call it their choice, so be it. So long as it helps you to stay out and to protect yourself. But if none of those are working, if they're hurting you, if it's keeping you in because you're looking at it as a disorder or a disability that you can work with, or you're looking at it as their choice that you can change, help change, then none of those work. I realize that this is a, an open-ended discussion. How do we resolve this? Well, we're just now getting the conversation started. Leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And as I said before, if you do need one-on-one -on -one support to get away from toxic family members, narcissistic siblings, brothers, sisters, or even a spouse, head on down there, schedule some time with me. I'd love to work with you. In addition to that, I do have the coaching program. It's live and in person each and every day. Join the Row Week coaching program right now and be sure to get your custom finger painting, right? I painted that just for you. I want you to have it on your phone. Head on down there, schedule. Some time with me and I'll be back with more videos for you right here on the Royal Weed. Now, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification so that you don't miss any future videos by the Royal We. I upload something for you each and every day. So head on down there, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Be sure to check out down below in the description box for links for one-on-one -on -one appointments and also for the coaching program. And before I leave, check out one of these videos that the YouTube algorithm is recommending for you, and I'll be back right here on the Royal Way.